Some years ago, having little or no money, I thought I would sail about and see the oceans of the world. Whenever I get grim and spleenful, whenever I feel like knocking people's hats off in the street, whenever it's a damp, drizzly November in my soul, and I know that it's high time to get to sea again, choose any path you please, and ten to one that carries you down the water. There's a magic in water that draws all men away from the land leads them over the hills, down creeks and streams and rivers to the sea. The sea, where each man, as in a mirror, finds himself. And so it was I duly arrived at the town of New Bedford on a stormy Saturday late in the year 1841. <laughs> It is. What mark? To this a penny, to that another penny, and so off the top of the glass. The Cape Horn measure, which you may drink down for a full shilling. The penny mark. Hey, the full shilling. You'll be wanting a room tonight. You ain't no objections to sharing the harpeneer's bed with him, have you? You going whaling? That is my intention. You need permission. You weren't born and bred in New Bedford, were you? Oh, I'm a stranger here. Then you'll have to have permission. Permission? Aye, from us. The men of New Bedford. The sea is ours. Other seamen only have a right of way through it. And the whale is ours. Ours alone. No one else may hunt it down and kill it unless we say so. Do you dispute that? I do not. Good. Then you have our permission to sail our sea. Drink to this boy, eh? Mates! Big whales to him, eh? <laughs> Whales do that? Why, bless me, whales can do anything. A whale can jump up like an earthquake and come down on you. Like a mountain that some have put to sea. A whale can stave in the ribs of the biggest ships, swallow whole crews, pick its teeth with the oars. Mind, lad, if God ever wanted to be a fish, he'd be a whale. Believe that, he'd be a whale. Ahab. Who's Ahab? Captain Ahab to you. Who's Captain Ahab? Why, Ahab's Ahab. Music! Music!
selling his head. Is what? Selling his head. Though he may have some difficulty in getting rid of it. New Bedford's overstocked. With what? Heads, of course. Come on, lad. Bob, well, what do you say? I you tell me I was sleeping with a, with a cannibal? Well, I thought you knowed. Didn't I tell you he was around the town selling heads? Landlord, tell him to stash that to tomahawk there, a, a pipe or whatever you call it. Well, pleasant dreams. same New Bedford, there stands a whaleman's chapel, and few are the fishermen shortly bound for the Indian Ocean or Pacific who fail to visit there. Swallow up Jonah. Book of Jonah. First chapter, last verse. God called upon Jonah to cry out against wickedness. But instead, Jonah fled from his command. Why? Why did Jonah willfully disobey God? because he thought it was too hard. Now, imagine poor Jonah skulking, prowling about the ships at Joppa like a vile burglar, and he bargains a passage, hurrying to cross the seas. He thinks that a ship made by men will carry him to countries where God does not reign. But the sea rebels. 
It will not bear its wicked burden. A dreadful storm comes on, the wind shrieks and howls. Terror upon terror runs through the souls of the men. They mark the stranger, suspicious of the god fugitive from the moment he came aboard. They now blame him for the great tempest that is upon them. And now, now behold Jonah, seized upon like an anchor and cast forth into the sea. And God awaits him, comes upon him in a mighty wail, clamps all his ivory teeth about him and swallows him whole into the belly of hell and dives 10,000 fathoms down to living gulfs of doom. And there, far beyond the reach of any earthly sound, Jonah cries out his repentance. Not by begging for deliverance, no, no, but by praise in God for his just punishment. And the Lord speaks to the great fish, and from the shudder and cold and blackness of the deep, the whale lifts his great head and comes breaching up toward the warm sun and all the delights of earth and air. And vomits Jonah upon the dry land. And ever after Jonah preached the truth in the face of falsehood, woe to him whose good name is more to him than goodness. But, oh, shipmates, a far, far inward and upward delight is to him who against the proud captains and commodores of this earth stands forth his own inexorable self. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may we strive to be thine more than to be the world's or our own. Here we die. We leave eternity to thee. I count 50, many pages, many, a big book. You know words? Yeah. I know picture, this whale. You speak words? The heart of the whale is larger than the pipe of the waterworks at London Bridge. The water in that pipe is not so thick or fast as the blood pumping from the heart of the whale. True, true. Thank you. Quick, Greg. Who are you? Where are you from? My father, King, High Chief. My uncle, High Priest in Islands. West, south, far away. Ship come by island. I take canoe. I sail. I swim. I climb rope. I hide. Ship take me far. Many years. See all world. Odd. Uh, Many's the Christian wishes he was a dark man on a cannibal isle. What next, quick, quick? Sail ship. You? Tomorrow I hope to sign aboard any ship in search of whales. I sign too. Your boat, my boat. I eat same food. 
We sail on same waters. We kill same whale. We friends, same blood, same head, all same. making sport of me, lad? No, oh, I just fell into that manner of speech. If I went a Quaker and a man of peace, I'd fetch their clout on the side of their head, my lad, just to make sure. I see thee art no New Bedford man. Dost know nothing at all about whaling, I dare say, eh? I've had several voyages in the merchant service. Merchant service? Flukes, man. What takes thee whaling? Sir, I want to see what whaling is like. Have you seen Ahab, the captain of this ship? If they want to know what whaling is, then they'll know by clapping an eye on Captain Ahab. They'll see a man torn apart from crown to heel and spliced back together with sperm whalebone in place of what's missing. His looks tell more than any churchyard sermon about the mortality of man. And a whale did that? A whale as big as an island. Art thee the man to pitch a harpoon down a whale's throat and jump after it? I am, sir if it should be positively indispensable to, to do so. Come along, man. Bill, lad, stir yourself. This young man says he wants to ship. Has never been a pirate, has he? Never. It's not murder thy last captain at sea? Oh, indeed not. He'll do. Bill, lad, what pay shall we give him? 777th part would not be too much, would it? For this strapping lad, not half enough. Captain Peleg, they has the generous heart, but they must consider the duty they owe us to the other owners of this ship. Widows and orphans, many of them. If we too abundantly reward the labors of this young man, we will be taking bread from their mouth. My last day I'm was putting him down for the 300th part of the profit. Do you hear, Bill Dad? The 300th part, I say. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt. My last pay was... The 777th part seems fair enough to me. The 300th. Well, Captain, I... Don't thank me, lad. I only do thee justice. What holds it? Sign. Well, sir, it's it's Captain Ahab. What about him? Was not Ahab of old a very wicked king? And when he was slain, did the dogs not lick his blood? Look, lad, Captain Ahab did not name himself. Sign the paper now and wrong him not because he happens to have a wicked name. Now for that son of darkness that is thy friend. Quick way, step forward. What say you, Bildad? I suspect thee art not a Christian. Does thee attend church on Sundays? Does thee know and obey the Ten Commandments? Poor hot man. Take the pen. Make the mug. Sign now for a sixtieth part of our profit. But now, quick. Going aboard, shipmate? Yep. Uh, shipmate, have you signed a sail on that ship? Have you signed a sail of Pequod, I say? Was there anything down about signing away your souls? What? Perhaps you haven't got any. Have you met old Ahab yet, then, have you? What are you jabbering about, shipmate? Did they tell you how his mother birthed him, turned from him, gave him his evil name and died? Did they tell you how God's lightning struck down and branded him? Did they tell you how he spat in the holy goblet in the church at Valparaiso? And did they tell you what happened his last voyage? I know all about him being crippled by a whale. Come on. All about it, eh? You sure you do? Sure? They tell you how the whale marked him inside as well as out? Did they tell you the mischief was worked on his soul? And no, I don't think they did. How could they? Who know it? Not many, I guess. Ah, you can't fool us. It's the easiest thing in the world for a man to look like he's got a great secret in him. I have, lad. I have. 
at sea one day, you'll smell land where there be no land. And on that day, Ahab will go to his grave, but he'll rise again within the hour. He will rise and beckon that all, all save one, shall follow. Morning. May the heavens bless you. Hey, you. What's your name? Elijah. My name is Elijah. beat an easterly course toward the whaling grounds off the Azores. Her crew came from all the isles of the sea, all the ends of the earth, from Greenland to Mombasa, from Clyde to Cocovoco. Flask, the third mate, bullied everybody bigger than himself, particularly whales, with whom he carried on a one-sided feud, as though the great leviathans had mortally insulted him and his forebears. And there was Pip, black little Pip, the cabin boy from Alabama, Second in command was Starbuck, whose Quaker stock had furnished many a whaleboat with its champion. No crusader after perils. His courage was one of the great staples of the ship, like beef or flour, there when required and not to be foolishly wasted. Ship's carpenter, he fixed everything from stove boats to broken arms and legs. Perth, the blacksmith, lived amidst thick, hovering flights of sparks. He breathed them in and out. They nested in his ears. But Perth cared not, because, as he said, he was scorched all over, and you cannot scorch a scar. Queequeg was our first harponeer. 
Next was Tashtego, the Indian from a great warrior race of red men, come to hunt whale instead of buffalo. Then Dagoo, who got his boldness and majesty and grace from having killed a lion single-handed and partaken of its flesh. Stubb was second mate. Stubb, who'd have tied a bowlin in the devil's tail for a joke. Carefree, foolish, laughing, wise Stubb. Of our supreme lord and dictator, there was no sign. Ahab stayed silent behind his locked door all the daylight hours. straight up and over us, like a solid iron figurehead suddenly thrust into our vision, stood Captain Ahab. His whole high, broad form weighed down upon a barbaric white leg carved from the jawbone of a whale. He did not feel the wind or smell the salt air. He only stood staring at the horizon with the marks of some inner crucifixion and woe deep in his face. Mr. Starbuck, send everybody aft. Captain Ahab, sir. Send everybody aft. Mastheads there, come down. But Captain Ahab, in a wind like this... Master, all hands aft. Here. Aye, sir. All hands aft! All hands aft! All hands are here, sir. Thank you, Mr. Starbuck. Do you hear me there, men? I hear you. What do you do when you see a whale, men? Sing out for him. Sing out. We sing out loud. Uh, sing out for him, then, do you? And what do you do next, men? Lower away and after him. Aye. That's right, Captain. And what tune is it you pull to, men? A dead whale or a stove boat. Aye. 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 That's the tune, my boy. Oh, ye mastheaders. Have any of you for now heard me give orders concerning a white whale? Look, do you see this Spanish ounce of gold? A $16 gold piece, man, do you see it? Aye, wish you Hand me yon top maul, Mr. Starbuck. I'll fix this gold piece to the mast. And whosoever of ye raises me a white whale, Headed whale with a wrinkled brow and a crooked jaw. Whosoever of ye raises me that same white whale with three holes punctured in his starboard fluke. Look ye, whosoever of ye raises me that same white whale, ye shall have this gold ounce, the boys. Aye. It's a white whale, I say. A white whale. Can your eyes for him, man? Look sharp for white water. If ye but see a bubble, sing out. Captain Ahab, is that the whale some call Moby Dick? Moby Dick. You know the white whale, then? Does he fantail a little curious, sir, before he goes down? And a curious bout, too, Captain? Have he one, two, three, good many iron in his hide, too, Captain? Aye. The harpoons lie all twisted and wrenched at him. Aye, his spout's a big one, like a whole sock of wheat, and white as Nantucket wool. Aye, and he fantails like a split jib and a squall. Death and devils, men, it is Moby Dick. You've seen 
Moby Dick. Captain Ahab. Yes, Mr. Starbuck. I, too, have heard of Moby Dick. But was it he took off thy leg? Who told you that? Aye, Starbuck. <laughs> Aye, my hat is all round. It was Moby Dick that dismasted me. Moby Dick that brought me to this dead stump I stand on now. Aye, aye, it was that cursed white whale that received me, made a poor pagan lover of me to the end of time. Aye, and I'll chase him round Good Hope, and round the Horn, and round the Norway Maelstrom, and round Perdition's Flames before I give him up. And that's what ye've shipped for, men. To chase him on both sides of land and over all sides of earth till he spouts black blood and rolls in out. What say, men? Will ye splice hands on it now? I think ye do look brave. Aye. 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 A sharp eye for a white whale. Sharp lance for Moby Dick. Aye. We'll hunt him, Captain. Aye. 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 God bless ye, men. Steward, go draw the great measure of drug. Drink and pass and rum for all. Rum, I say. Round with it, round. Long swallows, men. Long swallows. It's as hot as Satan's hook. It spiralizes in you. Forks out of the serpent's snapping eye. <laughs> Drink, ye harpooners. Drink and swear death for Moby Dick. Left harpoons, me cup bearers. Drink, me sweet cardinals. I commend the murderous chalice to your lips. Drink and swear. God hunt us all. If we hunt not Moby Dick, to his death. name certain whales then? Aye. Special big murdering whales with long histories. Whales who killed ten times a hundred men. Whales like Timor Tim, New Zealand Tom, or Morkan, king of the Japan seas. Whales have big names to go with big doings. And the biggest of them all is Moby Dick. Mm. A white whale, he have said. Can a whale be white? He is white. Whiter than all the snow that ever fell. Like a great marble tombstone, he is afloat. Wherever he swims, white sky birds wheel above him. Birds white as angels. Which oceans does he swim in, Maxman? All oceans. He's been spied in different seas a thousand miles apart on the same day at the same hour. Maybe he just ain't one whale, but a whole breed. Maybe Moby Dick's a hundred whales. Then they all have crooked jaws and wrinkled brows and a dozen irons stuck in their white humps. Aye, many have lowered for Moby Dick and struck him, only to know his vengeance. Some have boasted they killed him, but always he comes gliding back, huge and white and secret-like. Immortal, as they say. You ain't trying to scare us, Maxman. I say what I say. There she blows! From where to starboard! There she blows! There go flukes! Flukes go down! I So we stripped our first whale, and boiled the blubber down to a fine, pure oil that would keep the lamps burning in a thousand homes, the clocks ticking on their mantelpieces, and perhaps 
anoint the head of a king. And when at last we cast the whale's bared bones into the sea, we were in no way sad at its funeral. Curses throttle thee. Up helm, set all sail. Keep out of the wind. Good morning, Mr. Starbuck. Good morning, sir. Well then, Mr. Starbuck, what's the long face about? No matter, sir. Speak, man, would ye not chase the white whale? Are ye not game for Moby Dick? I'm game for his crooked jaw. Game for the jaws of death, Captain Ahab, if all comes fairly. But I came here to hunt whales, not my commander's vengeance. How many barrels will your vengeance fetch in the Nantucket market, Captain Ahab? Come closer, Starbuck. Money is not the measure of my lad. Let me tell you, my vengeance will fetch a premium here, here in this hut. Nay, sir. But vengeance on a dumb brute that smoked you from blindest instinct. It's blasphemous. Madness and blasphemy. Back here, Mr. Starbuck. There's one god that's lord over the earth and one captain that's lord over the Pequod. Do you so much as dare think critically of me? I spoke too rashly. My conscience is in this ship's keel, Mr. Starbuck. And though my motive and my object may be mad, I'll hunt the white whale. Uh, I'm bound to hunt him, heart, soul, and body, lungs, and life. Do you hear, though the wildest winds of heaven and earth conspire against me, I'll reach my hate upon him. Hunt him, then. Wait, the dumb brute, say ye. Moby Dick is a murderous monster, strong and inscrutable, cunning, cruel and remorseless, and sinewed with malice. A vast man, have ye no bowels for a fight? Are not the crew one and all with Ahab? Would ye hang back when every former's hand has clutched a western? Speak, man, speak. God keep me. Keep us all. Can ye say no more? You're my commander. I must obey you. Ye need have no fear of me. But let Ahab beware of Ahab. Beware of yourself, old man. Go below, Mr. Starbuck. Aye, aye, sir. Go below. Down, dog, I I'm not used to be spoke to that way, sir. I less than half like it. Then be called ten times a donkey, a mule, and an ass. And be gone, or I'll clear the world of you. Fast head there. Aye, Look sharp, all of you. There are whales hereabouts. If you see a white one, split your lungs for him. What's that, he said? Ahab, beware of Ahab. Well, there's something there. Oh, the lightning flashes through my skull and mine eyeballs ache and ache. My whole beaten brain seems beheaded and rolling on some stunning ground. My heart is sick. I'll go below. like going down into a tomb for an old captain to descend this narrow scuttle down to his grave dug bed. I seek my nightly grave to sleep between shrouds and down I go griping at the iron banister to help me crippled way. Hark to the crack and din of my bony step. 
My dreams will be of the crunching teeth of sharks. <laughs> if I could sleep, old age is wakeful. The longer linked with life, the less man has to do with aught that looks like death. <laughs> I leave a white and turbid wake. Pale waters, paler cheeks wherever I sail. The envious billows sidelong swell to whelm my track. Let them, let them. Yonder the diver's sun, slow dive from noon goes down. My soul mounts up. She wearies with her endless hill. Ah, time was when as the sunrise spurred me, so the sunset soothed. No more, no more. This lovely light, it lights me not. All loveliness is anguish. Damn! Subtly and malignantly, damned in the midst of paradise. Good night. Good night. And yet tis not too hard a task. I thought to find one stubborn at the least. What I've dared, I've willed, and what I've willed, I'll do. They think me mad, Starbuck does. But I am demoniac. I am madness maddened. That wild madness that's only calm to comprehend itself. The prophecy has been that I should be dismembered and I, I lost this leg. But I do now prophesy that I'll dismember my dismemberer. Now be the prophet and fulfiller one. Ye great bully gods, I laugh and hoot at ye. You desperate and blinded bendigos. You've knocked me down, but I'm up again. I have compliments to you. Come see if you can swerve me. Swerve me, swerve me. The path to my fixed purpose is laid with iron rails, whereon my soul is grooved to run. O'er unsounded gorges, through the hearts of mountains, under currents' beds, I rush. So will I fight ye, ye grim phantom futures. Stand by me, hold me, bind me, ye blessed demigorgons. Stand all! The white whale fight fake blood! stood out toward Bikini, Ahab kept to his cabin and was rarely seen. The mastheads were empty against the sky. No cry of thar she blows was to entice us from his single purpose. So in April with a new moon, we entered those waters where Ahab hoped to find the white whale. Look alive, lads. That gold belongs to him with a sharp eye. That coin's worth six I'll be first to sight the white whale. Run for me if I win the coin. Enough to dive into and never reach bottom. Blacksmith, 
What are you making there? Oh, welding an old pike at some... Can you make it all smooth after such hard usage as it had? Mm, I think so, sir. Ah, and I suppose you can smooth most any seams and dents, no matter how hard the metal... Aye, sir, I think I can. All seams and dents... But one. Look ye here, then, blacksmith. Look ye here. Can ye smooth out a seam like this one upon my brow? If he but could, glad would I lay my head upon thy anvil and feel thy heaviest hammer between my eyes. Answer. Can ye smooth this seam? Oh, uh, that's the one, sir. Uh, Said I not all seams and dents, but one. Aye, blacksmith, tis the one, for though ye see it in my flesh, it has worked down into the bone of my skull. That is all wrinkles. <laughs> but away with child's play. No more gaffs and pikes today. Look here, here. I want a harpoon made. One that a thousand yoke of fiends could never part. Something that will stick in a whale like his own fin bone. There's the stuff. Look, ye blacksmith, these are the gathered nail stubs of the steel shoes of racing horses. Horseshoe shoes. Why, there's the best and stubbornest stuff we blacksmiths ever wear. Aye, so tis indeed. These stubs will weld together like glue from the melted bones of murderers. Quick, forge me the harpoon. <laughs> Hammer, man! Hammer! And temper the steel till it smells of fire! Like a musket's powder pan! And here. This harpoon is for the white whale, me boys! For the white fiends humped you here! And now for the knives and barbs to cut and twist you in! Here are me razors, the best of steel. Here, blacksmith, make the barbs, then make them sharp as the needle sleet of the icy sea. Here, to work. <laughs> Hammer, blacksmith! Fire away! Ah. Ah. Now they take shape. Ah, no, no, no water for these dagger points. Don't temper them with water. I want the true death temper. Ahoy there, testy go quick, quick the goo. What say ye, pagans? Will ye give me as much blood as will cover this barb? Mm. There's me brave lads. Here now, I'll make three punctures in this heathen flesh and temper my harpoon with human blood. <laughs> <sighs> They go non baptized ote in nomine patris, sed in nomine diaboli. In the name of the devil, I baptize thee. In the devil's name. Ha! No, my harpoon is done. The Rachel out in New Bedford. Aye. Captain Gardner's ship. She's coming around. Give me a trumpet there. Ship ahoy! Have you seen the white whale? Firm whale! Moby Dick! We are found him! Not ten miles from this spot! We lost the boat towed out of sight by him to Lewis! Three days and nights we searched! My boy was in it! My own son! Twelve years old! Captain Ahab, will you help me search? As we're Christians, we cannot refuse it. You will! I know you will help! You must! Oh, you must and you shall do this thing for me! This I know will be in a black disgrace. At home they'll spit at mention of the Pequod's name. Captain Ahab, answer me! Look ye, Nantucketa! Here in this hand I hold his death. Tempered in blood and tempered by lightning are these barbs. And I swear to temper triply in the hot 
place behind his pen where Moby Dick most feels his cursed life. God forgive you, Captain Ahab. The black homage wrench thee. Race forward there. Up helm and keep her to the course. He's in these seas. Somewhere in these seas. Old Moby Dick is swimming. April 19, 1842. Ahab's chart shows Moby Dick and the new moon rising together, but the moon's lost its horns. There ain't no sign of the white whale yet. Seven days and seven nights on watch. Ink on below, eats on deck, sleeps standing up. How much longer can he hold? into the sea. The wind don't move, the tide don't move. Nothing. Even the sun's nailed to the sky, like that gold doubloon's nailed to the mast. You lad, pull that gold coin off the mast, throw it over the side, pay the sea a ransom. Maybe it'll come back to life and bring us a wind. Manxman, stop! A cool wind. A cool wind. You, Manxman, stop! Quick, quick, what are you doing? Tomorrow here, bones tell everything. Quick, quick, what's the matter? What do you see? Get the carpenter. Well, what do you want the carpenter for? Carpenter? for you. How much you built coffin for? Coffin? Well, two dollars would do nicely. Hold on. Built coffin. Six feet, seven inch. Clean wood. Make like best boat. Cork and tar seams. No water come in. Calf chief's feather on lid. Six feet, seven it'll be. Quick, quick, what's all this about? Money yours. See, just yours. I have pool. Yours. Goodbye. What? Quick, quick, what are you talking about? Quick, quick. Quick, quick. Quick, quick, listen to me. Say something. What are we going to do? thing to do. Building this coffin. Morning, morning, Mr. Starbird. Morning, sir. It's a mild wind and a mild-looking sky. Aye. Indeed it is, sir. Yeah. On such a day, very much such a sweetness as this, I struck my first whale. A boy harpooner of 18... Forty years ago. Forty years on the pitiless sea. And of these forty years, I've not spent three ashore. For forty years, I've fed on dry, salted fare when the poorest landsman 
add fresh fruit to his daily hand. Away, whole oceans away from the girl wife that I wedded. I widowed that poor girl when I married her servant. Her. What a 40 years. 40 years fool as I have been. How the richer or better is I have now. Do I look old? It's a very old starboard. I feel deadly faint, bowed and humped. As though I were Adam staggering beneath the piled up centuries since paradise. Stand close to me, starboard. Let me look into a human eye. Ah. This is the magic glass man. I see a green land. I see my wife and child in thine eye. Captain, let's leave these deadly waters. Let's sail for home. Think how joyously we'd bowl our way to old Nantucket Harbor, sir. Home and harbor. Aye. Home is pitiful. And in the harbor, there is safety. Comfort, hearthstone, warm blankets, friends, and all that's kind to our mortalities. It's a mild wind to carry us home. And the air smells now as if it blew from a faraway meadow. They've been making hay on the slopes of the Andes, Starbuck, and the mowers are sleeping among the new mown hay. Captain Ahab, sir, shall I give the orders? Shall I tell them to put about to sail for home, sir? Home? Aye. Home. Aye, she blows! Aye, she blows! Aye, she blows! Where away? On the lee beam, two miles off. I see him. A hump like a snow hill. Each movie dick. Reef the fore and main top, so stand by to lower away. Stand by to lower away. Oh, Moby Dick, I clutch thy heart at last. Will you capture him, old man? In heaven's name, no more of this. It's worse than devil's madness. Which way do you see him? Sing out for every spout, though he spout ten times a second. Our she blows are again. Where to? Straight to lower. Lay me on, boys, lay me on. Pull me, hearties. You see that white water? I shall go staring mad. Pull, man. Pull and keep pulling. Burst. Your livers and your lungs, we're coming up. Steady, boys. Steady. Help me, man. I wish to stand the harpoon now. The eternal sap is running in old Ahab's arm. I'll try again. You got it. Rope is broken. The harpoon is gone. It's a omen, Captain. Shall we keep chasing this murderous fish till he swamps the last man? Shall we be dragged by him to the bottom of the sea? Ahab is forever Ahab, man. This deed's immutably decreed, and I am the fate's lieutenant under orders. No 
whale. That a great white god. Long days and nights we strained at the oars, while the white whale swam freely on, widening the waters between himself and Ahab's vengeance. Where is he now? Can't see the spout, sir. It's too dark to see. There he is, straight before him. <sighs> he shoots like an arrow out of the sea. Stand by me, men. You see an old man cut down to the stump, leaning on a shattered lance. But tis Ahab. Believe you men in things called omens. Do you feel brave? After him! Row, then! Master, the sea's alive with sharks. They crowd our wake like vultures. Far ahead, too far ahead, I meet ye this time, Moby Dick. Steer for the open jaw, me boys. I grin at you, you grinning whale. Oh, these sweet powers of air hug me close. The lance now, steady. Oh, my eyes are blind. I cannot see. Yet, from hell's heart, I stab at thee, Moby Dick. For hate's sake, I spit my breath at thee. The jaw, the jaw. Queequeg's coffin was my life boy. For one whole day and night, it sustained me on that soft and dirge-like mane. Then a sail appeared. It was the Rachel. The Rachel who, in her long, melancholy search for her missing children, found another orphan. The drama's done. All are departed away. The great shroud of the sea rolls over the Pequod, her crew, and Moby Dick. I only am a 
escaped alone to tell thee. Beyond all harm of human weal and woe, where for long Chinese ages the billows have rolled on, speechless and unspoken to, is now my most familiar home. Here in that awful waterland, amid the world's foundations, where unrecorded names and navies rust, ballasted with bones of millions of the drowned, I lay me down. Oh, I have seen enough to split the planets and make Abraham an infidel, yet not one syllable is mine. Oh, hey. Great Moby Dick, most mighty, broad, baronial tyrant of the sea. All thy unnameable minglings float beneath me here, buoyed by the breaths of one time living things exhaled as air. But all is water now. Thou art my Thy throne is here in these unverged seas. O oh, lonely death, unlonely life. And this great shroud, the sea, rolls on as it has rolled five thousand years ago.